Here we go. Spoiler alert, audience. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Jason Show Home Edition. All new. Yes, this isn't a rerun. This is all new. Hi, everybody. I hope, I hope as you're sitting there watching us from home with your whole family, uh, I hope you're doing well. Um, I know that this is just tough for all of us. So I, uh, I'm glad that we can do these shows uh, twice a week to give you a little respite. So for the next hour, let's just kind of forget about uh, all the bad news. Let's forget about murder hornets. Did you guys hear about that? Like we didn't already have enough to worry about. Pandemic, unemployment, death, and now we have to worry about hornets the size of producer Ted coming to attack us. Anyway, I, I, let's concentrate on the positive. Get a cup of coffee and uh, let's have some fun for the next hour. Again, you heard me say it, we do have new shows every Tuesday and Thursday for right now. We hope to increase that number eventually. Uh, but again, I can't say it enough. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, thank you for continuing to watch our best of shows. It means a great deal to all of us. Uh, thank you for your patience. This one woman, this one woman emailed me, bless her heart. And I mean that not passive aggressively, because in the South, you say bless your heart to be sassy. But I really mean she was she didn't mean anything by it. She she sent me a message on my personal Facebook page. She goes, I am getting real sick of these reruns. Why can't you do shows from home like everybody else? And I said, well, sassy Sally, we are and have been. I, I said, we've been doing home shows now for almost, well, I think a month. And, and, and she goes, I didn't realize Tuesday and Thursday were an option. I said, well, they are lovely, um, uh, Tuesday and Thursday, and we hope to do more. So thank you for watching. And I'm really, I'm really um, sorry that the reruns are an inconvenience for you. And she wrote back a little heart face. So I think uh, all is good. Uh, before we get to the hot dish, I always like talking to you. I always like answering some of your questions today. The uh, question comes in from Phil. No, not Phil from our Jason Show fan club. Another Phil who asks uh, how the at-home shows get put together. Well, that actually sparked an idea. I'm going to be putting together a story probably in the next week or two of how we actually do this. I, I thought you guys might think that was fun, interesting, I hope so, of how we get the sh uh, at-home editions on the air from the fact that like right now, this studio is actually, as I've said, my podcasting studio slash extra bedroom. How does it go from this to the TV that you're watching at home? So Phil, that's a great idea. Great question, and we're gonna turn it into a, a, a whole story. So thank you very much. And if you have a question for me, you can always find us at Jason Show TV on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And who knows, I could uh, answer a question right here at the top of our at-home shows. Well, if you're ready, I'm ready. It is time for the hot dish. There we go. Oh, I have a spoon too. Here we go. Look at this. Ooh, right there, right there. Did I do it right? I did it. Okay, let's get going, everybody. First up, let me take a drink. Oh, by the way. We weren't on the air for May the 4th Be With You. So here's my Darth Vader mug. May the 4th Be With You All. You guys know I have my, I'm always representing Star Wars. I have my lamps. I have my Star Wars Rise of Skywalker poster right there. I don't care what anybody says. I love that movie. I've now watched it about 27 times. As Taylor Swift once said, haters gonna hate, 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 hate. Okay, let's begin. Uh, Reality shows are starting to get real creative, trying to do fresh episodes for us all because they're running out of shows. We're going to get to a point where there are going to be, I told you this last week, we're going to have no fresh episodes of anything. Well, Bravo's Real Housewives of Orange County are getting real creative. Here they are right here uh, from their Instagram account. Yep. How creative? Well, the show is in the middle of production for their 15th season. Can you believe it's been 15 years? Uh, they were in the middle of it when the coronavirus shut everything down. Well, now the ladies are beginning to shoot the season themselves. Shannon organized a hangout with the cast members on Sunday night and made sure everyone was following you know, all the CDC guidelines, like wearing masks and staying six feet apart. 
I actually think this is a great idea. And I'm telling you, they're not going to be the only show that does this. I was just having a, uh, I think you'll, um, oh no, I was having a conversation with Leslie Miller who is uh, on the show. And uh, I said to Leslie, this is going to profoundly change a, a lot of how we do business. I mean, the fact that, again, I can do this show with an iPhone, an iPad, that's what I'm looking at down here. It's amazing. So I think bravo to bravo for doing this. Now, I hope it's not like Blair Witch Cam where it's all shaky for an hour. I can't deal with that. I can't. Anyway, speaking of jumping up and being shaky, let's talk about Tom Cruise for a second. We all know Tom. I loved Tom with a capital L, and then he jumped on Oprah's couch, and then everything changed. But here he is uh, from his official Instagram account. Here he is, probably an image, I would assume, from the new Top Gun. Well, Tom Cruise is fresh off flying fighter jets in this movie. Well, forget fighter jets because he has a sets, his sights set even higher. Tom is reportedly in talks with Elon Musk and Elon's company SpaceX on a project with NASA that would be, are y'all ready? The first feature film shot in outer space. That's right. Tom is known for pushing limits and performing his own stunts, but stunts, but this would take things to a whole nother level. Now, we don't know what the movie is about. We don't well, it's about space. It's obviously not about the circus or anything. Uh, but we don't know what the plot is. We don't know why Tom's in space. We don't know why this would be necessary. But if any star is going to do this, it's going to be Tom Cruise. Why? This doesn't surprise me. That shot, I, I'll show you again. That's really Tom Cruise. When we eventually see Top Gun uh, Part 2, that's really Tom flying those jets. So this doesn't surprise me one bit. But Tom, please stay safe. From movies to TV, next in the dish, one of my favorite shows, Dead to Me, on Netflix is getting ready for another season. If you do not know, Netflix is releasing the second season of the dark comedy, Dead to Me, uh, this week. It, tomorrow, it stars Christina Applegate and Linda Cardellini. If you miss season one, uh, Christina is a widow and becomes friends with Linda, and it takes a lot of twists and turns. That's about all we can say right now. Mm -hmm. That's it. Can't say anything more. If you miss, uh, if you missed anything, you're going to have to watch season one to get season two. Now we would love to show you a clip of season two, but there are bad words and there are a lot of spoilers. So just go watch it. If you need something to binge, go binge dead to me season one, and then get ready for season two. And you can find that on Netflix. I'm really excited. This has been, uh, yeah, dead to me is probably in my top 15 list of shows uh for 2019 remember 2019 what a gentle year no pandemic no murder hornets no tom cruise in space it was lovely we're gonna take a break everybody go get another cup of coffee whether you have a darth vader mug or not and meet me back here in just a few minutes Welcome back, everyone. She is our dear friend. She's family. And uh, we haven't caught up with her in a couple weeks. I literally just got an email about uh, three days ago that said, um, are you going to have Miss Shannon on these at-home shows? I said, Miss <laughs> Shannon was on it already, but we can have her again. And there she is. Please join me in welcoming Miss Shannon. Hi, sweetheart. Hello. Hello, darling. How are you holding up? You know what? I'm doing well. It did crack me up. This this woman emailed me uh, like in the middle of the night. She goes, "I'm loving, I'm loving the at home shows, but uh, right. we haven't seen Aaron Schwab and we haven't seen Shannon." And I said, "Ma'am, uh, both were on last week." But I mean, okay, <laughs> sure, yeah, okay, yeah. Anyway, you know what that's like? It's like when I because uh, I grew up uh, uh, as a baby DJ on a music radio station, and no matter what song you play, the minute it stops playing. Somebody calls you and says, can you play that song? So yes. that's just, they. It, it doesn't happen if they didn't see it. So I'm happy to be back. So thank you for the request. Dear lady out there, here I am in all my glory. You know, so, while you're here and, you know, you and I never uh, pull punches and uh, we have real conversations. Uh, you uh, you are a part of the My Talk family, the radio station I'm on and Shannon's on and obviously people uh, watching uh, they may listen mm -hmm. to the radio show and they know about the job eliminations last week at our station. Uh, yeah. And, and it's hard. What would you say, Shannon, you, you've been in radio for a lot of years. 
what would you say to the listeners um, that just don't understand when stuff like this happens? Because you and I have been through this many times on both yes. ends. What, what would you say to them? And I mean, personally, I'm highly impacted because my best friend works at our sister station and she was one of the people who was let go. And so it's been helping her adjust to all of this as well. And I think the biggest thing is it's just proof that even though we come into your earbuds and come into your living rooms and we look like we are above a lot of these things because they go, well, we're local celebrities. It's, it's a job and we're real people and things happen to us the same way it does to other people. And that's very unfortunate. Yeah, It's just, you know, we're in the midst of trying to balance everything that's going on and these really unexpected pivots that we had to make so quickly. Like when we really think about how different things were even in January. And I mean, you and I, the last bit I did live was something that there's no way we could ever think about doing right now. I was at a mall yeah. giving people food off a random tray. You know, like, yeah. that's, that's, that's not a thing. Nope. And I think that's, it's us going, well, what's the world going to look like going forward? And how do we transition into it? Like if you miss one of those people, support what they're doing now. You know, people are going, well, maybe I'll start a podcast. Maybe I'll do something. They're looking for ways to uh, continue to create wonderful content and the things that their fans love. So find that person, support them, get your friends to listen, get your family to listen. If they go, hey, here's a virtual tip jar, throw some money in it and make sure that they have a following because that means when we do start to rebound for this, those are people will be the first people to get hired again yes. once we're hiring people. So again, show your love, give virtual hugs. Right. Uh, like our buddy Aaron Schwab, who's doing shows yeah. with Jay, you know, mm -hmm. and that brings us that lands the plane perfectly into why you're really here. Tell the folks what you're doing this weekend. Well, this is a project of my heart. It's called Comedy Through the Chaos. It's something I kind of had had uh, kicking around for the last couple of years, and we really hadn't launched it. And so now seems the perfect time to do it. It's a combination of comedy, inspirational videos, storytelling, just people just explaining how they came to the pro through the process of processing difficult subject matters through comedy and laughter. So we already had planned on talking about difficult subjects like family issues, identity, mental health, all of these things that a lot of performers have really, really impactful and funny and comical things and stories to share with everybody. But we do it in this particular venue. And so who would have thought when I came up with the name Comedy Through the Chaos that it'd be launched in the midst of chaos. the most chaos we could ever have like Shannon, so, we can't get much more chaotic because girl it's like i'm a mystic i didn't know i was a mystic jason could so. you hear about the murder hornets we i mean i we, know we have a pandemic people are losing their jobs we lost kobe hey. this year and now yep. we have to worry about murder hornets that are the size of your index finger Here's what I'm saying. Droughts, pestilence, and plagues. I didn't know that we were in the end times, but clearly we are. <laughs> so was what that meant. Uh, so it's just, it is, uh, every day it feels like, wow, another thing? But don't you get better at rolling with the next weird punch? I don't know. Maybe it's just my friends and I going, of course there's hornets. <laughs> Shannon, I, I, okay, you're optimistic. I was, I, I, I'm getting bristled, so I'm no longer surprised. But I got to tell you, when I saw a video of one of the murder hornets basically eating a mouse in about uh, 30 seconds, I thought, well, here we are, we're doomed. I mean, you know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> there's murder hornets. There's places in Brazil where it's literally raining frogs. There's all these things that are going on. It's life. It's hey. I, we don't I, live in a bubble. I can't. I can't. Okay, so tell the people again, uh, Comedy Through the Chaos, how can they support you? Uh, how can they watch? Well, it debuts this Sunday night at 5 p.m. We feel there's since it's Mother's Day. We'd like to have a nice little Mother's Day matinee so everybody can join us. Uh, it's going to debut on Facebook at Shannon Paul Comedy. We're also going to stream it to YouTube. So if you need all of the links, you can always go to my website, MissShannon.com, Shannon with an A. Yeah, MissShannon.com. Shannon, stay indoors. Uh, don't get near <laughs> the murder hornets. 
Uh, I actually can't because I have to. I am the I am the the young one in the tribe, so I have to actually put on all of my gear and forage out to the grocery store after I finish talking to you. Okay. So wish me luck. <laughs> I, I want you to put on an outfit that looks like the NASA people coming to get ET. Okay, please. <laughs> I will do that. No problem. Thank you, Miss Shannon. <laughs> you everybody, we're gonna take a break. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back, everyone, to the show. Hope you're uh, having a good morning. Let's take another sip of coffee. I'm loving. This is a huge mug. Can I tell you? It's not real conducive to this small set, but it's there. Again, may the fourth be with you a couple days late. Well, I told you uh, about a month and a half ago that I really wanted to focus on some positive news. Yes, we're going to talk about some reality, some depressing things sometimes, even on our little show, but I do want to keep it focused on on the good stuff. So we came up with a fun name. There it is. Jason's non-negative news roundup with a lot of rainbows. How can you be depressed looking at that graphic? First up, listen to this. An anonymous donor, an anonymous donor gave a $1 million donation to, let me get this right, the Dignity Health Dominican Hospital in Santa Cruz, California with one request, one. The anonymous donor wanted that $1 million divided up between the entire staff of the hospital. So it breaks down like this. You ready? So full-time employees like nurses, cleaning staff, lab techs, record keepers, security guards got an $800 check. And then part-time workers got a $600 check. I I was thinking about this. If I had like crazy money, I'm not talking silly money. I would even do it with silly money. But if I had like Elon Musk money, that's what I would do. I would have so much fun going out and doing that. Just paying off. Like when you see people like uh, Tyler Perry paid off uh, an entire grocery store full of uh, customers bills. That would be so fun to do. Another story similar to that. uh, There is, where is it here? There is a restaurant in Austin, Texas that just reopened. On the first day they reopened, a wonderful customer left a $1,300 tip, a $1,300 tip. And the owner says the guy told him, quote, he was extremely grateful that we are open and putting ourselves at risk to serve the community. And I'm seeing stories like that locally all over the place. I was helping with the delivery, um, with the delivery thing over the weekend last weekend. And this woman came up the drove up. I welcomed her and she said to me, she goes, here's a hundred dollars. Give this to the staff that's making all this food, you know, and, it, and, and it's moments like that, that kind of, um, for me, and I needed a moment that day to kind of, I was starting to lose faith in people, if I'm being very honest. And that woman started my uh, path back to faith and other, other people. Uh, Cause I was starting to think, uh, 80% of people were pretty awful, but that woman was, it was, it was great. Well, if you have a great, fantastic, non-negative, good news story that you would like me, uh, to spotlight here on the show, it's easy. You can find us at Jason show TV on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, especially if it's a good Samaritan story. We love those around here. So shoot them our way and who knows it could end up here on the show. We're going to take a break, everyone. Stay right there. So much more ahead. So get another uh, little cup of something and meet me back here in just a second. Welcome back, everyone. She is our foodie fanny, our foodie diva. We count on her in good times and bad to tell us where and when to eat. And this week, we're counting on her for mom. Ladies and gentlemen, I can hear you clapping at home. Please give it up for Stephanie Hansen. Good morning, Stephanie. Hi, I'm so glad to be with you guys. You look real, okay. You look real good. Thank you, you look, I, I mean, you, sh- you look like you've showered. You've, uh, you've brushed the hair. I mean, it's all real good stuff. I've been doing a lot of Instagram videos and you forget that you have no makeup on and you look terrible until one of your gal pals is like, um, you need some lipstick. <laughs> Put on some lipstick, girl. Yeah, you Tiny look good. Little lipstick. Okay, we're talking Mother's Day, uh, and every year we do things differently. How are we dividing this? How are you? Rec- I love this. I'm asking for the viewer. How are you doing it this year? 
Okay, I was trying to think about like, this is curbside delivery and pickup, so it's a little less exciting to begin with. But I thought, okay, I'm gonna break it down by the type of mom that you have, right? So my first suggestion is like, if you have the earth mother, like think Elizabeth Reese, think someone that's out in the garden, that's kind of a hippie, maybe they're uh, interested in growing their own food, for that kind of a mom, you want to do curbside pickup from Wise Acre Eatery. Okay. It's in Minneapolis, and they have their own farm. So they have their own uh, pastured meats. They've got their own jams, their own eggs from their own chickens. And they're doing a brunch for four with an egg bake. They've got breakfast potatoes. And they also have this sparkling wine that I'm just crazy about that you can add to your order. It's uh, French sparkling wine. It's Baron de Ciliac. And a couple of the places have this sparkling wine. It's so good. What What makes it, okay, I, you know, I got to stop you when we talk the wine. What makes it yeah. so good, stuff? I don't know. They have a rosé okay. that I'm just crazy about. This is a white. And as part of this package that you get for four, you get a little um, thing to make your own Bellini, like a little berry sauce that they make. Oh, nice. So this is the Wiseacre package. You can get it by emailing the order. I just, they're really sweet. And it's in Minneapolis and everything's farm fresh. So that's Perfect. for your earth mother. That's for the, all of you, if you are the, if you are the hugging of the tree, this is for you. Earth mother lady. Next. Okay, what if you're like a sophisticated urbanite? This would be like my mother-in-law. This is someone who you'd find at the Walker on a Saturday afternoon, who is a museum goer, who just feels like she's a little cut above. Yes. This person you're going to want to order from the Kenwood. And this is also in Minneapolis. It is not fancy, but it's it's kind of a little upscale. They're gonna give you a brunch and you're gonna also get that sparkling rosé that I was talking about. You can add flowers. So I really like that they give you a flower option. And this is like a little gem salad with strawberries and a little chev. They're also going to have um, a delicious dessert. You're going to get a grilled ribeye. You're going to have like this really nice restaurant -y style dinner for the sophisticated mama. I love I love that. The, yeah. The, 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 the woman. <laughs> the on mom the might wear a scarf, you know? Yeah. Like it, like an 80s teen villain. Totally. Yeah. Like uh, Alexis Carrington. Exactly. Okay, who, what's next? Okay, the next one is like the no frills or the just like practical mom, right? This is Colossal Cafe. They have a location in Minneapolis and in St. Paul. It's going to be your very value priced, good deal type brunch. It's $14 for a roasted tomato and feta egg bake. They've got cinnamon rolls. They've got an orange lavender quick bread. The menu is available for pickup. It's really just good quality, wholesome food. And this is like a mom who's not afraid to throw a couple cinnamon rolls in her face. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, yeah, you know what? I get time for all your whole 30. I'm just going to like eat my food. That's that kind of mom. <laughs> She's just like, just give me some Pillsbury cinnamon rolls. Yeah. I'm putting them in my mouth. I like that. And I'm going to be good. And the fact that you like thought ahead and thought of me is good enough. This is awesome. Yes. Do we have any more? Is that it? Oh, no. I have a couple more. I love How it. How about a vegan loving veggie mama? Okay. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Vegan loving veggie mama. Yeah. So this is the mom that's vegan. She's really vegetable forward. Stanley's in Northeast has a whole vegan family feast. So it's got vegan... Um, it's got the vegan chorizo, it's got fresh berries, beyond vegan sausage, they've got a hash brown vegan scramble. And you can get it for two or four. So let's say that you're not so vegan -y. Yeah. You can get like a vegan feast for two and then get like the full on meat feast for two. So you can satisfy the whole family and that's it's at good. Stanley's in Northeast. It's good for carnivores and herbivores. <laughs> Yes. And they have a Bloody Mary kit that you can pick up and some do-it-yourself cocktails that you can add to your cart. Again, this is pretty reasonably priced and you can order online at stanleysbarroom.com. We have one more, two more? I got two more. Perfect. Okay. How about the socially distant mom? Like this is, this is actually <laughs> my, my mom situation. My mother-in-law's an older lady. We haven't been able to see her. Yes. So for this, you're going to do France 44. 
and they have like a tote and the tote was designed by someone in the store. It's super cute. And it includes uh, strawberry shortcakes, some tulips, a baguette, some breeze, some chocolates, some thumb cookies. And for every tote that you buy, it's $125, but $25 of that goes to Second Harvest Heartland. Nice. So we're making a donation. You can leave it on mom's door. You don't have to get inside, but you can order it online. And it's a tote that you could just put on her door, wave, and go on your merry way. Stephanie, and I've got I one more. I laughed when you said socially distant because what I thought you meant was emotionally distant. <laughs> no, but that could fill the bill, really, you have, if you yeah, just like you, drop and run. Yeah. Do you have a list for the emotionally distant mother? <laughs> I do, but that's another therapy session, and I'd probably give you really good advice. So, you know. We have one okay. more. The last one is just like your traditionalist mom, right? This is the mom that likes to do the same thing every year. She's kind of nostalgic. And that would be the Lexington mm -hmm. because they are known for doing just a fantastic brunch. It's going to be a take and bake that serves four. It's going to have a ramp and wild mushroom egg bake. There's going to be ham, ch banana chocolate chip coffee cake, herb roasted potatoes, and you can order it online. They've also got orange juice that you can add to your mimosa. And so these are just like all different kinds of ideas based on how you think you would most be able to honor your mom for Mother's Day. I love it. And uh, you can follow Steph at Stephanie's Dish on social media. But Steph, can you stick around? Because I have a question on the other side of the break. I have a question about some big restaurant news that has popped since our last episode. Would you mind sticking sure. around? Yeah, absolutely. Because, like, I mean, I asked, like, what else are you going to do? I mean, you, you should, somebody <laughs> should see you in that fabulous outfit. So, yeah. I've got lots of time today. We all do. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with more Stephanie Hanson right after this. And we're back with our buddy Stephanie Hansen uh, from The Weekly Dish on My Talk 1071 on Saturdays and, of course, on social media, Stephanie's Dish. Stephanie, I wanted to ask you um, big news out of the restaurant industry, horrible, sad news over the last week, Bachelor Farmer closed. And I asked you this on the radio show and I wanted to do this on the TV show too because you put this into context better than most. Because if you're sitting watching the Jason show right now, Betty from Anoka is what I call my lovely average. Uh, Hi, viewer. Betty. Hi, Betty. Why should Betty from Anoka, who never comes into Minneapolis, who's not a foodie like you, are, you and I are, why is this a big deal and why should she care? It's kind of one of the first restaurants that really called attention to the North, as it were, or Scandinavian cooking. We were finally recognized from both coasts, the West Coast, the East Coast, the chef Paul Berglund that opened Bachelor Farmer with the Dayton Brothers. Was He was cooking Swedish meatballs in a way that was a little upscale, a little unique, a little different. And the building that they were in was just so beautifully constructed. The Daytons have excellent taste and style. The building was very stylish. It was also one of the first restaurants to kind of not launch the whole North Loop, right? It was one of the first signature restaurants there and then other restaurants came after that. So it really launched like a neighborhood. And it also, I think, Sh shown the light on what kind of cooking we're doing here in Minnesota. We weren't flyover country anymore. People paid attention. It was a restaurant that attracted a president, a vice president, a first lady. A lot of travelers went there. It was really kind of a um, cultural icon for this food of the North in the North Loop. Steph, what do you think it says about, do you think it's a bellwether? Do you think it's a, a sign? What do you think it says about the, the Minnesota restaurant scene in general uh, coming out of the pandemic? Yeah, I do think it's a bellwether. We've seen, speaking of bells, four bells went out of business this week. We've seen Muddy Waters Cafe. I think we're going to see restaurants go out from high end to coffee shops. It's just been a really difficult time. I think there will be some light at the end of the tunnel. I think there will be restaurants that will survive this, but I think it's going to look completely different. I don't know that we're going to have a lot of fine dining, white tablecloth type of service in the beginning, because it's going to be hard to do that with gloves and a mask and your sneeze guard and your shield. I mean, it's just going to be so different when we actually do sit down in a restaurant. Many of the restaurants that are opening around the country are at 25% or 50% capacity. 
you know, there's these restaurants that are fancy restaurants in New York. You're not going to be able to go and have a 12 course meal because you're not going to be able to sit there that long either. There's going to be shorter turn times. It's going to be more um, uh, different type of menu items, not as fussy, not as fancy. It's just going to feel like a completely different experience. And I also think they'll be doing takeout too. So it's almost like you're running two restaurants in parallel, which is a unique challenge. I was going to say, putting on your uh, Karnak hat, that's an old Johnny Carson reference for the youngins watching, but <laughs> if you could put on your Karnak uh, uh, hat, what, what? and you kind of answered it there, what do restaurants look like in six months? Do you see a hybrid of, yes, they'll open up in phases, maybe at 50%, but they're still going to be doing takeout. Is that what I'm hearing? I think 100% because you just can't get the profit margins that you need to out of just takeout alone. And a small restaurant at 25 or 50% capacity, you're not going to be able to get it either. So they're going to need to do both. And I love this trend and something that's been really cool is how many of the restaurants are doing pantry items. They're doing cut meats. One of the restaurants is even offering toilet paper. They're doing um, flowers from their neighbor. They're really taking products from the farmers and the people that have supported them and doing more pantry items. So when you do your to-go, you can load up your shopping cart and maybe skip a trip to the grocery store that week. And all the restaurants, the Star Tribune did a nice profile. All of the uh, superstar chefs and restaurants that are doing online cooking classes, they sell a yes. kit, you take the kit home, and uh, you follow along. It's, uh, again, uh, ingenuity. I love it. Yeah. And I I really, those cooking shows, the online ones of the chefs really appeal to me. I've been watching Seme Wade's Deliciousness. I've been watching Karen Tomlinson. She's kind of cooking uh, favorites from like her family's past. She did picnic chicken the other day. And the way she did the chicken, it occurred to me that that's how my mom did it. Because I could never figure out how my mom made her fried chicken. And I watched her and she did it just like my mom did. So now I know how to make my mom's picnic chicken. I love it. Picnic chicken and all. Picnic Ladies chicken. and gentlemen, she said it all. Stephanie Hansen on the Weekly Dish Saturdays on My Talk 1071 and follow Stephanie at Stephanie's Dish. Bye, Steph. Bye, guys. Oh, I, I let you wave there. It actually should go back to me. There we go. We're going to take a break. Stay with us back after this. And welcome back to The Jason Show. She is our wine diva. She is our mistress of Merlot, our Chardonnay Chantreuse. Joining me literally, literally from about four <laughs> steps to the north. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Leslie Miller, everyone. Hi, sweetheart. Hello. How are you? I'm well, because again, people, we, we joked about before, Leslie and I, just full disclosure, I, I'm not joking, Leslie could probably throw some food from her window and I could catch it, right, Leslie? I could probably catch it on my window. It's true. I'll throw you some donuts. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so what is, uh, we always do a theme. We always, what what is today's uh, theme today? You know, we need to talk about our moms, Jake. We do. You know, Mom's Day is coming up and people are constantly asking me what's the perfect gift for Mother's Day. Of course, you know, you can always buy her wine because lots of moms called me telling me to tell their kids to buy them some wine. Well, I let me start. I You know me. I like to start the compliment and it just, just popped in my mind. I have to tell you again, and we mentioned that the last time you were here, uh, Colin went and bought uh, some wine for one of his best, 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 best friends, Carrie's birthday. And he was like, look, this, he goes, I'm not just saying this because we love Leslie and Leslie's on the show, but that was so cool. He goes, the, the friend loved it and props to you. He was loving the interface of your website. Basically like, can you kind of explain before we get into this, um, yeah. Because this is, as you said, this is the gift buying time for mom. Right. Your website is broken up like, well, you explained it, how you ask people questions to determine what kind of wine they should buy. Yeah. So, you know, my second company, Sip Better, that you're speaking of, really morphed out of my first company, Amuse. So Amuse, I, I have been for 20 plus years standing in front of people, you know, teaching classes as a sommelier, getting to know people, their palates. And people are always asking me about healthy wine. You know, how do I select wine for my palate? 
Um, you know, I go to a retail store and I never really know what to buy. I buy things based on label. So I started Sip Better and Sip Better, I literally had joined 50 plus wine clubs all over the country uh, because it was always when I got to the wine club aspect of it, I really wanted to align something that worked for somebody's individual palate versus just cool wines that I'm sending you that maybe you don't even really like. They're wines that I like, but you might not like. So we start with, you know, pick a tasting kit from one of three selections that you see at Sip Better under our Get Started page. And I've literally categorized uh, wine drinkers into three different areas. So one, it's called Let It Rip. It's called the Wine Jedi, actually. You just let me pick you, you know, four wines. We'll see where we go from there. Or you're the person who says you're super adventurous. And you're always the person that's looking for a different grape, a different region. You're totally nerdy by nature when it comes to grapes and wine. Or the last one is um, the bigger, the better. And that's generally the person who loves really big, beefy whites and reds. So basically you start, and this is kind of where Mother's Day comes into play because everybody's looking to give an experience right now right? Something that you can yeah. do at home that would be fun. And that's what Sip Better is all about. So literally you can gift off one of these tasting kits to, you know, your mom or somebody else. And you literally pick what kind of wine drinker you think they are. You let me pick them. And that's what Colin did and just loved it. Loved the whole thing. Well, yeah. that brings us, that brings us right to the parking lot of Mother's Day. What do we have in front of you there, Leslie? Well, I have a bunch of rosé because moms love rosé and on our shop page section, I have a whole rosé all day uh, shop page where literally you can send mom a bunch of rosés. However, we're also teaching all these virtual wine classes, as you know, for the last couple of months and they are crazy. People from all over the country, parts of Canada are joining us for all of these classes because they're only 10 bucks a class. And we have an entire class devoted to Rosé. And um, I've had a lot of friends reach out to me and say, I just really want to do something fun for my mom. Um, I'm going to gift her a class with you so that she and I can take them, obviously, from their own living rooms but then they can hang out and drink rosé online and little and learn a little bit while they're doing it. I love that. So these are three that are what what are you I'm jealous. I wish I should just run over to your house. So what's <laughs> uh, what's what's one of your favorites right there? So I, you know, I'm just a giant fan of rosé all year round because rosé really does go with so many different types of cuisine, things that you're eating, whether you're vegan, vegetarian, you're into poultry, you name it. And literally you just have to think of rosés as lighter versions of grapes that you already love. So you can have a Pinot Noir rosé, you can have a uh, Tempranillo rosé. This is Nebbiolo. Um, it's a grape actually that lives in Northwest Italy. But what I love about it is it's kind of grippy. It's really acidic. Um, you drink it and all you wanna do is just sit at, sit at home and eat you know, cheese and charcuterie, olives, those kind of things. It's just perfect obviously for Mother's Day. Okay, the next one. So these guys all really kind of have, this is a little uh, little one from Chile here. And this is one thing that we don't always think about, but Chile is, because they're in the Southern Hemisphere, they're ahead of where everybody else is sending their rosés in. So we were getting the Chilean rosés in January, February, whereas European countries are starting to send them to us now. So you usually get grapes that are anywhere between Pinot Noir, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet, uh, Merlot, Malbec, and they're a little bit more rich and more intense, sometimes a little bit spicy. Um, and then, of course, you can go with the traditional uh, Provence style rosé, which is kind of where I don't want to say rosé was invented, but it became very, very popular with the kings um, of old uh, in France. So Provence rosés are still very much in fashion. And correct me if I'm wrong. So and we, we've covered this, I think, years ago on the show. Rosés were really hip for a while. I think, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't it the 80s, Leslie? It was, they, they, they had a surge and then they became really passé. And it was like... Then the wine snobs kind of went rosé. And yeah. then 
they came back and it seems like they haven't left. They have, they're still at the party. Am I right on this? Yeah, they've really gotten to be a very big topic. You know, rosés were invented literally a couple hundred years ago. But the reason why we started drinking rosé in the United States is because white Zinfandel came along. And white Zinfandel, like I ne- I can't ever be too mad at it because it's really what got this country actually drinking wine just in general. And it was pink. And so people thought of it as being rosé, even though white Zinfandels were really born sweet. And so, yeah, in the 70s and 80s, you know, our moms were definitely hanging out, you know, drinking lots of white Zinfandel there along the sweeter style. Now, My I mom th- did. Dar yeah. loved the white Zen. Yeah, exactly. Don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. My mom is still drinking lots of white Zen, right? I always say, hey, she's drinking grape juice, so I can't be, you know, I'm all about it. Exactly. So, you know, but they were sweet. And, you know, from a sophisticated side, you know, some would say that, oh, it's not as, you know, beautiful and elegant as a dry rosé. And I think, you know, folks, unfortunately, in the wine industry, again, I don't look at it that way because if people are drinking wine, that means I still have a job. Um, It doesn't matter what color or style it is to me or even price point to me. Um, But, yeah, I think White Zinfandel was kind of getting this – yeah, it was sort of along the lines of like yellowtail, not super high quality driven. So people were like, "Eh, you can't, you can't." PB, remember, PB used to call it blush. Yeah, blush. <laughs> yes. Blush. I just watched a Golden Girls episode where they order blush, and <laughs> Dallas Miss Ellie orders blush. I'm like, what the hell is blush? You have the Maybelline counter. <laughs> Sue Ellen was drinking so much blush. Yeah, there was so much blush going on. But then, you know, it kind of came back around in the last 10 years where people are like, hey, look, every country out there produces a dry rosé. Um, and then it really became in fashion. I, I think I own at least 15 articles of clothes that have some type of rosé saying on them now, you know, because rosé all day as a hashtag came back. And then the millennials really kind of drove sales up again in the way of dry roses. So now you see them all over the place. Well, usually we're blaming them for things. Now we can say, <laughs> thank you, millennials. Thank you for say, for keeping rosé on the shelves. <laughs> That's right. Okay, amusewine.com. Follow mm-hmm. Leslie. Uh, sip. It's Sip Better, right, Leslie? Sip That's Better correct. as well. Yep, that's right. Yep. Here we go. The two places you can find the great Leslie Miller. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back. Before we go, I just want to mention again, you've probably seen the commercials uh, on the old Fox 9. But I am thrilled to be part of a wonderful homegrown night of entertainment and music. A great charity event called Shine On Minnesota. Sunday, May 10th, uh, right here on Fox 9 in in partnership with our friends at Minnesota Public Radio. Uh, It will be hosted uh, by my buddy Alex Kendall, uh, Jill Riley, and Kathy Werzer. Uh, And that big, big big-headed thing right there next to Alex. Three beautiful individuals and then that big bucket-headed human being right there, me. Oh, well. Uh, But join us. It's going to be so much fun. So many great performances by Minnesota entertainers, Minnesota musicians. Uh, I I can't really say everyone. I don't think I'm allowed to, but I will tell you some friends of the Jason show uh, will be performing as well. And uh, it's just going to be a great night of giving and a lot of local charities will be benefiting. Again, it's called Shina, Minnesota, Sunday, May 10th on Fox 9. And Kathy Werzer, I, I said it, I can't, I, I'm looking forward to getting know, to getting to know Jill. Uh, obviously, I love Alex. Uh, Kathy Werzer holds a special place in my heart. She was one of those uh, mentors that uh, when I first started in the business, she was there to give me a, a lift up. And don't we all, we need that. So again, Sunday, May 10th on Fox 9. Shine on, Minnesota. Thanks in advance uh, for being as generous as I know you will be. That's going to do it for us today. Again, thank you so much for supporting us, for watching our at-home shows. Uh, We do them on Tuesdays and Thursdays with best ofs on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. In the meantime, stay safe, go out there and be yourself, because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. I'll see you soon.